everybody, welcome to the GM's Alcove. I'm GM Fritz. Tonight I'm going to be DM Fritz. I'm going to be playing some D&D 5th Edition, uh, set in Midgard by Kobold Press. Uh, this is part of my learning campaign, and this is basically where I introduce new players to the hobby of role-playing games, specifically D&D in this case. Uh, normally I have about three or four different players who are generally new to the hobby of D&D. Tonight, specifically, I have a brand new player. This will be his first ever role-playing game session, so I'm pretty excited about that. We'll see how good he does. Uh, it's currently set in Midgard's campaign setting and a region known as the Crossroads. Uh, specifically, this little area right here, this is the region where I have my base of operations currently for my player characters, a place known as the Bridal Region. Uh, it's a place of my own creation. It's centered around a small town known as Bridal. It's basically their base of operations and where they go out and look for their adventures. So we're going to learn about that tonight. Uh, in the meantime, let's take a quick look at the players tonight. And as I mentioned, we normally have about three or four normal characters. Uh, Winnie, Lord Torrin, and Phythern. Uh, Winnie and Phythern will not be joining us tonight, but Lord Torrin will. Uh, as well as Killian Kane, brand new player to my campaign. We'll also be introducing a new NPC tonight. His name is Devon. He's a cleric of cores. We'll take a look at some of the stats here. As you can see, Lord Torrin, he's a griffin knight. He's level three, quite a few hit points, 34, and he's a pretty strong fellow. Uh, he's been in most of the adventures. Uh, you can see Killian Kane, brand new player. He's first level. Paladin of cores. He is a damn fear, lawful good paladin. So there's a lot of potential for role playing right there. So he should be a very interesting character to play. And of course, we're also going to be introducing Devon, who again is a cleric of cores, level one. He's going to be an NPC, kind of fill in for any missing players. So there's our players tonight, our characters. Let's see how uh, well they do tonight and what kind of adventure awaits for them. Let's jump in. And... Um... He kind of senses that you're new to the faith. I'm. And he um, says to you, uh, well, he, he asked you that very fact. He asked you if you are actually new to the faith, of course, learning his ways. I am quite new. I've um, recently, um, okay, let's say recently um, uh, followed this. This is a deity, correct, Kurt? Sorry to interrupt. This is like uh, a deity course. Um, Kors is a quite popular deity in the, the crossroads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's basically the god of light. Yeah. Some some so, spheres, he's the god of justice as well. Yeah. Uh, but he is a uh, he's a very popular god. So yeah. So after um, I would say that after years of darkness, Kors gave me a reason to continue. You speak of darkness, and what darkness would this be? Pardon me for asking, my friend. I, you see, I am a servant of Kors myself. And I felt his presence in this place and was drawn to your table because of this. But yes, I would ask, but what is what was this darkness that you speak of? Um, it's something that was, um, I don't want to talk about, uh, but um something like that was not um it was not in my control something um i was born with that i cannot throw out of me and i have to control it i let's leave it that bad oh, i see all right all right no problem. Uh, one second here. I see we have Colin has joined us. Welcome, Colin. And yo. Hi, Colin. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Fine. Thank you, my friend. I was enjoying listening to that from the children of the corn. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm new to the, to the faith. I misunderstood it. <laughs> All right. We'll speed through this a little bit. Because we are pressed for time, uh, at least in the case of Nick. But basically, the vibe that happens here at this little meeting here, uh, Killian, 
is that you've been befriended by uh, this character named Devon, and he he, mm. den- he identifies himself as a servant of Kors, uh, a cleric, in fact. Mm. Uh, and he, as you, is also a traveler and re- recently arrived here in Bridal, not a day before. Uh, he noticed your presence, you made good conversation. Uh, okay. And it's about mid-afternoon, let's say about around two in our time. Okay. When this one individual comes down to the comes down the steps, and this is obviously someone of elf uh, heritage, and this would be you, Colin. Uh, Winnie's nowhere to be found, and neither is Fythern. Taking a look around the Wayward Inn and Tavern, you see a new stranger you haven't seen. You've been here about almost a week now. I've seen quite a few people that you've seen before, but you've never seen this one individual. And this other individual seated by him in the, in the corner of the place. Okay. Well, it's been a long couple of days. So first thing I'm going to do, go up to the bar, talk to the bar, keep the gold piece, and just say, keep the deal coming until that runs out. Okay, make your deductions. Alien, you also notice this individual come down the steps, which are close by to the hearth, and you have the other side of it. This elven individual makes a presence. Otherwise, there is only about maybe eight people in the whole building right about at this point. It's still the middle of the day, and you, you expect it to kind of pick up the longer you tally here in the, the Wavered Inn um, Tavern. I want, to re- uh, I want a refill, so uh, I, I will buy Devin a drink. Um, he's the first guy I talk to. He seems very, he seems all right, although I'm not very uh, trustworthy <laughs> trusting at the moment but nevertheless i'm not the best judge of character apparently so um <laughs> that's uh, good. two copper so, pieces yeah so i will uh, get a drink for devon um slowly slowly i don't want um, people to keep looking at me because of my size so i'll go in the bar and i will ask for two drinks and i will buy devon a drink thank you my friend <laughs> we'll drink to cores into cause. Do I hear that? Yes, you do. <laughs> it's very easy to hear. Your passive perception would pick it up. And I believe, by the way, your passive perception lore is 11? Yeah. Yeah, you definitely heard that. <laughs> so, hearing the mention of cores for the first time in ever since I've been in this um, I'll just kind of get my interest peaked and walk over and kind of just head over towards their table and just kind of ask them why they're toasting the cores. Okay, kill an individual comes walking up to you. Yes, uh, I, it, well, uh, my first reaction would be, although I'm, I would be that, um, you can hear very well, my friend. I have a, I have a, some time in the wilderness to sharpen my senses. Good, good. That's a good thing. Uh, of course, is a deity that we both um, serve. Is a deity of um, sun, of. Uh, uh, goodness is a deity that um, uh, is a de- uh, justice, de- justice for justice, and um, we met just met today with Devon, and uh, by accident he is also a supporter, of course. And um, you can join us if you want. Okay, I sit down with him, and uh, as I do, I kind of to start to get comfortable but also kind of be positioned to where you know quick getaway is needed i'm able to you have a nice little discussion maybe another hour the three of you are sitting there at the table enjoying yourself uh if you want to buy another round of drinks that's two copper pieces a piece uh i will buy one round for lord turing he's a pleasant elf although I don't trust those, well, but you seem nice. I have a setup to where I have Neil constantly coming to me until Golden's Ah, you have... So. Con- 
Oh, yeah, you have continuous. I'll be good for a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to ask a question. How long to call in to, to Lord Torin? Tell me, my friend, how long have you been in this city, in this town? Oh, not including randomly walking up and down the road. Oh, uh, about a week. And answer me this: Why this na- this town is not fortified? Why it has only two cast two towers and everything else is open? You have any idea? It seems uh, strange to me. The it, main uh, idea that I would have is probably because they have no money. Unlike their mightier cities to the north of Zobek, mm-hmm. like this probably are just not wealthy enough to have towers or walls. And what about um, this? big castle in the top of the hill in the north. Not a clue. You have no clue. It looks very intimidating to me. I don't know. Strange. Of all the things uh, I've seen in this town so far, that castle is the least strange to me. Mm. I'll tell you what. Both of you can make history checks since you're both from the region. Uh, different parts. Zobic and uh, the Marguerite Forest. Go ahead and make history checks. Ten. Uh, cared for me, huh? All right, let me make your roll here. What's your modifier, Nick? Yeah, uh, one second. What is history check? Sorry, because I missed this. I don't know this history check. Intelligence. Ah, intelligence. Okay, intelligence um, is two. The modifier. No, it's one. It's one. Intelligence modifier is one. Sorry, I saw it now. Sorry, your total modifier will be plus one, and that's for your yeah. intelligence alone because you're not proficient. Yeah. Uh, you roll a five plus one. It's a six. Okay. And what did you get, Lar? Ten. Well, you're both relatively new to this region, of course, so you don't really know a whole lot about the background and history of Bridal. Uh, but what you have picked up, uh, Lore, is that the keep, uh, it's basically known as Elenthor's Keep. And this is the name of the... the person who built the castle and resides there currently, although he hasn't been seen in a long, long time, at least. That's the rumor that you hear in the town. Uh, but he's basically the the patron of the town and the founder of it, really, although he, pays, he plays no role in the politics or the governing of the actual uh, city. And I believe we covered this in past sessions, but from what you have learned, and he could relate this to you, Killian, is that the history of Bridal is, is really simple. It's basically, it was founded by the camp followers of a powerful mercenary captain known as Elenthor. And mm-hmm. Elenthor built this keep as a place to run his routines as a, as a relatively famous and successful mercenary captain. He trained recruits here. It was his base of operations. And it's where he eventually settled down and married and had a, and had a son. And the town of Bridal built up around this, uh, this, this castle. And basically, it was originally made up of the camp followers of uh, his mercenary band. Yes, but um, uh, okay, but um, they say that he's he disappeared for a long time. He hasn't been seen. Why is this? Anything? Any rumors? Anything about uh, him? No. Uh, strange, very strange. So you, you basically have to ask around. <laughs> Obviously, yes. Lord Thorne doesn't really know anything about it. Uh, but yeah, that's what you hear. He hasn't been seen or heard from in a long time. In fact, the person, person that you see if you wanted to visit the castle is a person named Galen. And he's he's the guy that's basically in charge for Elenthor. Nobody really sees Elenthor. Yeah. Well, that'll be interesting to see why Elinthor disappeared. Maybe there is a a mission, a mission of um, of uh, saving someone's life or a mission here, there. Anyway, it'd be interesting to know this, that the, that the, that the, the guy who built the city, this town has disappeared. Devon nods his head in agreement. He, he kind of interrupts and butts in, but pardon my asking, but are you gentlemen adventurers? You seek your living on the cusp of death? I would consider myself an exotic entrepreneur. 
Ah, I see. So you're all about the coin. Coin by the nail? Nail makes me happy. I see. Well, see, I, too, am an adventurer. Just began my career spreading the word of cores, uh, but also finding value in gold coin uh, to further the cause, of course, of cores. But uh, if you guys are of such a profession, I would throw something your way. Uh, I recently came to town two days ago, and I was uh, approached by an individual named Yolandul Shade. Have you heard of him? Not me. Now, Lord, I don't think you, I have either. You do know of him. Winnie, in fact, actually has met him. He is an elf marked, and he's a merchant in town. He deals in oddities and strange collections of things. But Devin goes on, and Devin introduces himself as Devin. Devin the Faithful. But he says he was approached by Yolandil, and he's seriously considering taking him up on this offer presented to him by Yolandil. He's basically, Yolandal is looking for something in the Moon Hills. Uh, if you guys are interested, I can I can take you in on it. We're supposed to have a meeting with him tomorrow. Um, I'm interested, but uh, I have some things to take care of today. Uh, very small tasks and things that require my attention. Okay, that's fine. And... He, he understands completely. How about you, Killian? Are you interested? Uh, sure. I've done... Uh, well, a chat won't harm anyone. And after the chat, I will decide if I'm in because I have certain rules um, on what uh, missions I take. And if oh, it's from, mission... From what he described to me, the coin is good doesn't matter the coin no it doesn't matter to me the coin is a means to an end i the missions need to be that can help uh, someone i don't want to to be in the missions that would harm people that would create problems my aim is to help so i need to see the mission understand it and then i will let you know and he fully understands you have a nice charisma score of 16 so he fully understands what you're trying to say Killian. Oh. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, the, the, uh, what he presents to both of you is an opportunity to meet with Yolandal Shade tomorrow afternoon. Uh, for he's offering, he's hiring adventurers basically to retrieve something from the Moon Hills. That's all he knows. And he's going to be filled in in the meeting. And okay. Devin is offering to you two if you'd be interested in joining him because he's pretty much alone, and he for would sure. like some companions if he decides to take Yolandal Shade up on this mission for sure for sure i said so you, as i said a meeting will be fine it's not a big issue so laura are you in I'll all right so on. basically you're in about mid-afternoon there's about <laughs> let me see here it's 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 now dusk actually one hour before dusk Got one hour of daylight left anyway. The crowd is kind of picked up here at the Wayward Inn and Tavern. There might be about two dozen people during the whole time you've been sitting and talking and drinking and eating with your newfound friends, Killian, Lord Torin, uh, who seems to be an elf mark. He doesn't seem to be a pure elf. Uh, and Devin, who's a human and a cleric, of course. So one thing you did manage to do is find not only some friends, but some followers, of course. Yeah. Fantastic. So is there anything else you would like to do? Now, this meeting is scheduled for the afternoon mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow. So if you would like to take part in that, you can do so. Also, mm -hmm. if you would like to explore Bridal and maybe buy some new equipment, I know you don't have yeah. any coins to work with uh, right now. You need some money. I would like to move around. I mean, I don't know how we want us to play. Move around a bit and ask questions and... Um, <laughs> Uh, sea areas or whatever. All right. Lord Torrin and Devin, uh, they're remaining there. They're, they're going to have a couple more rounds, they say, as you get up and pull your chair yeah. away from the, the table. And what would you like to find out? Now, you can carouse around the tavern or you can go outside. It's getting a little dark now, uh, but there's people walking about that you can stop in the street and say, hey, my name is so-and-so. What do you know about this or that? I can help you with that. What would you like to find out? Um, I would like to find 
a few things about um, the merchant we're going to talk about tomorrow. We're going to talk with tomorrow. Find what character he is, what type of person he is, if he's respected in the town like this. Okay, so what you would do is you would make a charisma check. Yeah. And basically, you don't have a d20, so I'll roll this for you as well. And whatever your charisma modifier is, tell me what that is. Yeah, one second, let me check. My charisma modifier, as we said, is um, is two. Okay, so you rolled a 13, so you got a 15 total, which is a pretty good roll. <clears throat> okay. You spend about an hour, uh, right as it's getting dark, exploring the outside of the Wayward Inn and Tavern and close by, asking about this individual, uh, Yolando Shade. What you have found out, he's a very reliable source oh, of odd items. He, he has a little merchant shop. You might want to write this down so you can refer to it later, but it's number six on the map. Okay, all right. Yolando's down, yeah. elixirs and wondrous items, and he's got a good reputation. Uh, he's elf marked, and he runs basically a business that buys and sells strange items. And he also makes uh, various potions <clears throat> that you might be able to find there, including healing potions, if you ever want them. Now, healing yeah. potions, just so you know, they're, they're not a very, very common thing, but they're common enough that you can buy them. But they're yeah. usually really expensive, like, say, 50 gold pieces just for Don't one potion. It. Devon is drinking currently with Lauren, Lord Torrin, yep. correct? Yep. Totally trashed. <laughs> Followers, of course, are not, not uh, unknown to the drink. Six, okay, six. I get it. So I found out that he's a reputable, a reputable merchant. He's actually quite reputable. Okay. Um, he's right close by to the monastery. Uh, Holy, uh, Holy Shield Monastery, which is the monastery to Lada. Probably the only deity or monastery to a deity located in Bridal. Yeah. Uh, he's not far from it. His little place. I what will, else would you like to... I will, um... I would, uh, like, now, now that I'm, I'm walking on the main street currently, correct? Yeah. Okay, so... I just want to go to the uh, to the edge of the town. Nothing but just walk around and um, see again if there are any. Um, just to um, let's say scout the the soldiers, see how what they were, see what they're doing, see if they're trained. Just from my eye or as a paladin, see how the town is protected and uh, just from curiosity walk across the city from one from from one tower to the other all right you can walk across with no problem uh, it's, it's a little more active people are getting themselves in for the evening it's starting to get dark uh, like I said you asked a few passers-by about Yolando and you did find out some information about him mm -hmm. oh the location of his his uh, place you step outside the uh, Wayward Inn and Tavern, and it's not really far to the south before you get to the edge of the town and another tower. There's another tower there. You see another couple guards. They have a lantern uh, held over the, the doorway into the tower. It's a big wooden broad door where they go in and out. And there's two guards close by, and there is a big lantern uh, over that doorway. So it kind of lights up the street in front of them. You can see them. Uh, they kind of eye you. As you draw close, I, I I want to go and talk to them. Okay, they both look your direction. As I you go approach, ahead. what I can we do go... for you? What can we do for you? Um, I want to use my I say hi to the to the use my persuasion. Um, yeah. A persuasion actually if you ask a question you use your persuasion you can use your persuasion to get an answer how it happens or um, you can use your intimidation I mean what would be better to, uh, to try to get an answer uh, depends on what you're asking uh, 
Uh, yeah. You could just ask them and get an answer. It depends on what yeah. you're asking. But if you wanted yeah. to use your ability of predatory charm, which you have, mm-hmm. now basically as an action, now mm-hmm. that's a combat. Pay attention mm-hmm. to actions. This isn't a combat. You can magically beguile the mind of a creature that you can see within 30 feet. For one hour after doing this, you have advantage on charisma checks made against the target. If you or any of your allies attack or damage the target, the effect immediately ends. When the effect ends, the target feels repulsed by you and becomes hostile towards you until the next dawn during which time it becomes immune to this effect. A hostile creature won't necessarily attack outright, but it won't deal with you in any way and might actively try to hinder you. Uh, You can use this trait once and regain the ability to do so when you finish a short or long rest. So it's basically, you've got to rest after using it. A short rest is like a half an hour to an hour long. A long rest is an eight hour sleep. Yeah. No, no, I'm going to use my... I'm, I'm going to just ask a question. Okay. Ask well, what I'm saying is that if you mm-hmm. use this ability, it mm-hmm. gives you advantage on any charisma-based check you make on that person you chose to use it on. Yeah. I, okay. I don't... Yes. Uh, I will I will start asking questions, see, and uh, I may use it later. See, it depends how their attitude is. Maybe they will be helpful anyway, so I won't have to use anything. Okay, outside of that, you're proficient in persuasion. Yeah. Okay? Persuasion is a charisma-based skill. Now, yeah. you're proficient in it. You're good at persuading people to give you information or answer yeah. your questions or, exactly. or whatever. You're also, you're also proficient at intimidation, where yeah. you use your charisma in a way that intimidates a person to give up information or do your yeah. bidding or whatever you're trying to get them to do. Now, you don't necessarily need to do these things, mm. or you well, can't. I will ask him first, um, what happened to Lord Elinthor and he hasn't been seen for so long, as I heard in the village? Uh, he kind of he kind of squints his eye at you, and the other one next to him kind of squints his eye at you as well. Like, that's an unusual thing to ask, but uh, nobody knows, he says. He generally keeps to himself up in his castle, I guess, but... He, he doesn't play a role in the politics anyway, so it's not unusual. Yeah. Um, uh, have you seen him recently, or have you seen him at all? Ah, nobody's seen him. Months. The other the other guard kind of nudges him and says, months? I would say years. Yeah, it's it's been years since somebody's seen him. There was a rumor here, in fact, quite a while ago where he, they said he passed away. It was so bad, in fact, that Galen had actually come out and and uh, told everyone that was false. But still, no one has actually seen Ellen Thorne in a long time. Why? Why do you ask? Who are you? Um, I am a traveler who just recently reached the city, and uh, I heard and I was trying to find out who is the master. Maybe there will be, a, 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 because I am um, I, I am an adventurer and a warrior, maybe there would be good money if he required something from me. You won't That's be earning any coin off of Elanthor, since nobody sees him. Nobody has dealings with those up in the castle. But anyway, you're an adventurer. I, I warn you to be careful around here. Yes, well, Stay out of trouble. And they both kind of look at each other and they they kind of wave you on uh, go on and be with be on your way they got other things to do okay so i'm i'm moving now i'm leaving back so um i think it's uh um the meeting with um with the merchant is in his merchant house correct the meeting is actually at the wayward inn and tavern that's I where devon is Staying. Okay. So I will walk back. I will pass from the merchant's house just to have a look at, uh, from outside, and then I will go back to the inn. Okay. You make your way back to the wayward inn. It's dark at this point. Uh, the only people you really see walking about is a few farmers. Uh, there's some people heading into the tavern and some of the other taverns in town. And there is a patrol of guards, a pair of guards that make their way along the main uh, hells, or not hells. Uh, King's Way. 
Yeah. <laughs> and you make your way back into the Wayward Inn and Tavern. And you can see there's quite a few people in here now. And there's actually <clears throat> there's actually a, a small folk over there in one of the corners next to the next to the hearth who's playing a little harp and singing a song. And it sounds quite quite appealing. You look to your right, you see you still see Lord Torin uh, and your new friend Devon still seated at the table and they look like they're quite happy at this point they've got uh, another fresh brew they're drinking uh, they've drunk too much i can see them i cannot join them i cannot drink more ah killian devon raises his head come on over my new friend come on hey join us for another round <laughs> no no thank you no thank you i will sit with you guys but um uh not more for me i need my head clear and um, my sense is controlled and my every I, I need to be aware because, tell me uh, Devin look, I'm going to get up and be like my friend the senses are most clear with a cup of ale join us <laughs> Devin, oh, well. Devin isn't perhaps as drunk as you might think he is and he kind of leans into you Killian as you take your seat and he, he kind of says to you so my friend what have you learned about this new place bridal well, I had a walk in the Kingsway. Um, I talked about, I asked around um, about the merchant and um, I got only uh, positive answers, him being an honest man and a reputable man. So there's no harm in talking to him tomorrow, as uh, Devon said. I walked in the end up to the south gate where the tower is. I talked to some guards. I was asking them about what we discussed before, what happened or what's happening to um, Elenthor. El Elenthor. Um, they told me that I haven't seen him for years. I'm surprised there's something going on here. If the lord of the, of the town has not been seen for years. I, it is a mystery. Yeah, they, they pushed, they, 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 they waved me on. I couldn't talk to them more. I didn't want to raise any suspicions anyway. So I came back. That's it. That was my walk. I mean, nothing something, more, but this was quite interesting, I think. Something to look into, perhaps, in the future. But, alas, tomorrow we have a meeting. You're in with us, right? Yes, uh, I'm in. I have only positive things. I heard only positive things about the merchant, so he seems to be a good man. We can help him. I agree. What about you, Lord Torn? Are you with us tomorrow afternoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lord Torn Lord... is completely inebriated. All right, I was going to say, make a constitution check, but you don't have You're to. You're settled there. You guys had a wonderful evening. Devin kind of steps away from the table uh, before it gets too too heavy in the drinking department. And he, he says his goodbyes to you and he agrees to meet you guys here again in the morning and make plans for this meeting that's in the afternoon with Yolanda. Uh, supposedly it's in a private chamber here in the Wayward Inn and Tavern. We'll see. And he makes his way upstairs and he stops and returns back to the table and says, Killian, where are you staying? Ooh, I haven't thought about it, but... Um... <laughs> This uh, this inn looks uh, good. If there is any room available, I will ask the maid. It's over. Shit, I'm gonna be penniless from the first day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where how is? Many, how many silver? Sorry. Eight. Eight silver. What is a fucking Hilton? <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is eight silver pieces. It's a comfortable oh. inn, so it's eight silver pieces a night. Now, as we play this campaign and go on with it, eventually what I'm going to do is you're going to pay monthly expenses where you, you spend a certain amount of coins every month to maintain a certain uh, lifestyle, whatever you want it to be. It's comfortable or high maintenance or poor or whatever. That'll determine how much you spend for all these basic expenses yeah. that we're specifically uh, looking at as we play. But that's so we can learn the game a little bit. Okay. That's why we're going into this kind of tedious detail. But anyway, this is how the evening transpires. Lord Torrin, I imagine you make your way up eventually for the evening. I will make my way out to the tree I slept at. <laughs> Constitution check to see if you puke all over the tree and leave a horrendous mess. 
Constitution. <laughs> that is 17. Disadvantage, by the way, because you're inebriated. Okay, well, that's natural one, so four. <laughs> You definitely puke all over the tree and fall asleep in it. So you wake up in the morning on that tree. So, covered in puke. so tomorrow to find him, we'll follow, we'll follow the puke smell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Winnie will know where he's at. Yeah. He's, got, he's got a favorite tree outside, outside of bridal. All right. Let's see. Winnie and Fythen are nowhere to be found. Off doing their own things, and they have their own rooms as well up in the in the tavern. Uh, just so you know, but Killian, you're all set up. You paid your paid for an evening's sleep here. Uh, just remember to keep deducting that, you know, for every night that you're here, or, or pay me a bunch at once to cover a few yeah. nights. But you're gonna have to make some coin. Yeah, you're starting off not very wealthy. No, I need to. Hermit. I hope this uh, mission for this merchant is worthwhile because I'm gonna get very upset. And I don't want to get upset. All right. The next day arrives. Lord Torn, you wake up at sunrise. You don't feel very good, but you you don't feel as bad as you did during the evening. <laughs> you got a really heavy good sleep, actually. Yeah. That's why. But you make your way back to the, the tavern. and it's, First things first, get cleaned up. <laughs> yeah. Get yourself cleaned up and all that basic stuff. Uh, you want to do anything else before the um, meeting? You still got a few hours. If you want to do anything, here's the time to do it. Yeah, I'd want to go to the general goods store and see if I can find a proper cloak. All right, give me a gold piece. Okay. And it's yours. A brand new cloak. That'll work. Nice, nice. Black, I'm assuming, because that's what we're looking for. Who was it? Savash's Trade Goods, number 10. Yep. So you can buy all kinds of stuff, some adventuring gear, farming equipment. Old Lon Savash, older guy in his 50s. But yeah, he's got what you need. He gets another cloak for you, no problem. Okay, so is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, get a good breakfast and try and get going for the day. All right, no problem. You have a nice, wonderful breakfast. You meet Killian. You also meet Devin once again, who makes his way down the steps. Uh, after some prayers, he joins you guys. And you all enjoy a good m meal together. Now, would you like to, Laura, describe where Winnie is at at the, this point? Um, she probably would be either upstairs sleeping or looking for looking for anyone who might know about that one merchant okay you're also joined by someone you haven't met yet before Killian and he's a pointy-eared individual kind of small in stature uh, he introduces himself he's a friend with lore and he introduces himself as Fife. my friend what's your name my name is Killian um you're uh, are you a long time in this town? Well, wherever the coin is, that's where I am. <laughs> I've joined up with these fine fellows. Lord Parn, sister. So everybody's here for the coin. Nothing more. <laughs> At least I am. I can't speak for them. This I understand. I understand. Well, my name is Killian. I'm here. Uh, we'll see for what. I don't know yet. Well, tell me. Just Tell me, I... Killian. It's well met, but... uh. Are you a man of faith? I am a man of faith. I'm a man of honor. You are. And as you say that, he lifts out this little bucket in his hand and he kind of nudges you in the chest with it and says, Well, here you go. Lord, so I'm just going to look at this. Father, put your box away. Arms. Arms. <laughs> Feel free to make a donation. <laughs> oh. And he. he, he, uh, he I. I he takes the nudge from Lord Tor and he pulls his arm away. <laughs> it's okay, okay. I'm always willing to take donations. Are there any problems? By this time, Devin has also joined you and you're gathered around having this wonderful breakfast. It goes without, goes without a hitch. There's a couple other people also enjoying their, their breakfasts. It uh, goes without a hitch, so... 
with that, we'll speed up time and jump to the afternoon. And you find yourselves in a secluded chamber in the Wayward Inn. You have joined Devon. You're seated at this long table. Phythern, Killian, Lord Torin, Deb. And at the end of this table is another, is the elf marked merchant known as Yolanda. Devin recognizes him as Yolanda. That's him. You all seat quietly. You all have a mug of ale paid for by Yolanda. It's a private room. Okay. So, let's not bit about the bush. What's this for? It's mid-afternoon in the small town of Bridal. It'll be just another day, if not for an elf marked named Yolandal Shade, a merchant of odd and rare items in town, as you know him. He's gathered you all together in this small private chamber at the Wayward Inn. Yolandal, seated before you at the head of the table, begins to speak. My friends, I'm glad you all have decided to come. I've admired your work as of late. And he looks towards you, Lord Torn. That of old adventurers of some success. Because of this, I would offer you my gold for your valued service. I will be brief and to the point. Enjoy your ales. A family heirloom of mine was stolen many, many years ago by one known as Palin the Merciless. Some of you might know of him as Palin the Pious. Trust me, they are indeed one and the same. Regardless, Pious no longer dwells with the living, as he hasn't been seen in over a decade. I believe that somewhere within his long-since-abandoned vault in the Moon Hills lies not only his life savings, which I leave to you if you take this mission for me. But also a set of scales, the heirloom of which I seek. Return me these scales, and I will grant you 200 gold coin. Plus, as I mentioned, you can keep any and all of the treasure you may find in this vault of his. So you want us to go to some hills, look for a vault, and bring back some scales. Indeed. So who's there that's preventing you from doing this yourself? Ah, I am a mere merchant. I'm always mm. on the lookout for adventurers of your, like yourselves. You are successful. Word has gotten around about your latest exploits. I would be willing to pay you the coin to do this for me. You notice at this point in the conversation that Yolanda is an elf marked individual, like yourself, Lore. But you note something unusual about him. He has a very pallid look to his flesh, which is kind of unusual for elf marked. Uh, usually their flesh and skin is more vibrant, but his is kind of pallid. Perhaps. It's because he's reclusive? Hard to say. It's just something you've noted during the conversation. Um, so, continuing, any merchant can go and collect something from a long dead person's vault. If you're trying to hire us, that means that there's something dangerous out there. Well, common knowledge would say that the Moon Hills are full of bandits and goblins, kobolds, and other ilk. And uh, they do... Traveling south along the King's Highway is, is indeed dangerous because of that, the close proximity of the Moon Hills. I'm asking you to, to take up this dangerous task in these hills. It's something far too risky for me. And that's why I would offer you this. Can I insight check him? You certainly can. 13. He seems to be being very honest and open with you about this. Uh, you're pretty convinced. Okay. Well then, 
I don't see what the problem is. I'm in. Good. And how about the rest of you? Will you well, take me up on this offer? It's 200 coins. And you could divide that up amongst yourselves as you see fit. This is this, my offer. What about um, these scales belong to who? You said before. The scales are an heirloom of my family. Uh, as I've mentioned, Pelin the Merciless was a pretty renowned bandit, from what I understand. And these scales were stolen from my family over a decade ago. And that's why I would ask you to retrieve them and bring them back to my possession. Why they were stolen? What's so special? He was a, he was a bandit. Quite renowned as one. But uh, he stole the scales. Um, From my why family. Why a pair of scales is so important to you? It's a family heirloom. But why are you willing to pay so much money? Is there anything special? Well, would you like to insight check them? Because it sounds like that's where you're going. Yep. All right, now just to fill you in, you don't have your dice, but you would roll a d20 and add your wisdom modifier. Plus, if you're proficient in insight, yeah. which you're not, no, I'm an idiot. And add that as well. So it's just a straight up dice roll minus one because your wisdom is it's nine. Too bad. Yeah. Eight. It sucks. All right, your score is a one. Minus one is zero. So as far as you're concerned, this individual is being honest and open with you. He really wants his family heirloom back in the hands of himself, his family. Yes, okay. Uh, 200 gold is a lot of money, and maybe we can find something on the way. I mean, no problem. Devin stands up. He's, he definitely looks interested uh, in gaining some coin. He does ask a couple questions. Uh, you can tell well, from what you see on the screen currently is, is a close-up of the the map where the location of the hills are okay. so this is common knowledge to anyone in bridal that can ask around or buy a cheap map or whatever you know this you know where the moon hills are and they're basically approximately six miles south of bridal in a straight line as the crow flies about six miles away a little longer maybe 10 miles if you follow the king's road then head off towards the hills that direction that's the distance you're looking at and Devin is curious about something else about this mission he's curious who is this palin the merciless and you also mentioned palin the pious he said they're the same person what what is what is this all about and yolandil then describes how many years ago there was a pretty famous bandit named palin the merciless some say he came from the southlands of magdar uh, and built up a, a small kingdom of bandits and it did a lot of banditry back in the day and he was well known for that but something happened he had a change of heart and became a follower of some deity nobody really knows perhaps Kors maybe Lada who, nobody knows but he converted over to some good faith and it changed him and he was a very good natured person from that point on and he became known as Palin the Pious at that point. And he has his vault is said to be hidden in the, the eastern portion of the moon hills. That's where he is said to have kept all of his wealth and treasure and also and also practiced his faith, whatever that really was. Hmm. Interesting. And again, he's said to have passed away some 10 years ago, so he's not around anymore. No one has seen him, so. Okay. Do we know what race he was? Palin? Yeah. Palin was, was human. Okay. Unless you have any more questions, I would recommend, my friends, if you agree to this, we could sign this contract. Then you could be on your way. And basically, he pulls open a scroll. And there's a quill with some ink where you can each sign the contract. And it basically says that you're bound to retrieve these scales and return to him, Yolandal Shade, these scales 
uh, within an appointed amount of time that you agree to, he recommends within the next few days. But by signing this, you're bound to this endeavor, and he will offer you the 200 gold pieces as part of the contract. Plus, it clearly states you get to keep anything and everything inside that vault if you do take it. And he reminds each of you that he was a very successful bandit. Nobody knows what became of his treasure, but it's yours for the taking, if it's there. I just want the scales. What, what about traveling expenses? Uh, what about the expenses? You can afford your own. You're famous adventurers. I'm not. <laughs> Last for you, you to the to discuss amongst yourselves how you would like to do it. So, as an aside, as an aside, if you want to try and ask him for half now and half later, you'd have to you'd have to banter with him for that. Yeah. Well, as Lord Harm going to say, um, yeah, no, we required half up front, half when the job is complete. Uh, and how are you presenting this to him? Laura Torn. As roughly as possible. <laughs> and slightly hungover still. All right, make a make a charisma persuasion check. <laughs> Not twenty, plus twenty one total. Okay, so with a little banter, he agrees with you, Laura Torn. It's only fair. And he offers to you a full fifty percent of what he's giving you. Uh, but no more. They'll give you 100 gold pieces now to use as you see fit, but you have to begin the quest immediately. That's fair. All right. Do you sign the contract? Yep. All right. You have three days, according to the contract, to bring back the scales. You receive 100 gold pieces. Uh, so someone, one of you guys write this down. 100 gold pieces for expenses. So you will receive 100 gold pieces once they're retrieved at scales and brought back to Yolando within three days. That's the agreement. That's the contract. Devin is quick to sign without any delay. Do you each sign? Yeah, I sign also, no problem. Now we got deposit, that's good. As a note, I'm gonna say that Lord Warren signs in cool ball. <laughs> So the scales are due on Moon Day. The next three days, it will be in the map you see on your screen. That's basically where you have to go. Yolando asks you or recommends that you ask around town if you need any more information or rumors or whatever about any of this. He's told you all that he knows. So he advises you to look a little bit deeper into this. It might help your mission. It's up to you. But... You got your 100 gold pieces ahead, and uh, you have three days to receive the next 100 gold pieces and retrieve, return the scales. All right, sounds good. So the first thing that we'll do is divide up between the four of us evenly. We're there. Okay, so it's 25 GP for Devin. Or yep. torn. Fathern and then Killian. Okay, and it's still midday, so you have plenty of time to ask around or buy extra equipment. Uh, well, we'll just go to the constable and ask him about it. All right, so you're going to head to the constable and ask about uh, whatever you want, really, about this mission. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Devin disappears. He's taken off. Probably going to buy some extra stuff, but he says he'll meet you back here in a few hours at at the Wayward Inn and Tavern. Sound good. All right, you make your way to Building 12. It's right behind the place. There's a couple guards out front. You go through the whole bit and bridle to get in. You get in. He's... Once again, Kalthus is behind his desk, uh, sitting in that little chamber off to the right. How can I help you? 
question. Uh, Torin? Yes, uh, I had a couple questions for you. One, how did that rat, rat problem ever turn out? And he kind of looks at you like, don't remind me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they've been taking care of it. And they actually found that there is, they've been down there, actually. Uh, nothing, they encountered nothing like what you guys encountered. They didn't encounter anything, actually. But they did actually find some tunnels that led, one tunnel actually led under the Temple of Lada, uh, the Holy Shield Monastery. They did locate that, so they're actually been issuing uh, around town. It's been said that, you know, keep your cellar doors locked. And they're keeping a close eye on it. We're not sure what we're going to do, though. Okay. Well, was anybody hurt or is everyone pretty well fine? Nothing strange popped well, out? Like you said, nothing was encountered. Mm. So, oh, no. That's good. As of yet, it's only been a day or two. They haven't really explored the whole thing, so as far as they know, but they are very concerned and they have some ideas of what they're going to do next, but I'm not, he's not going to divulge that at this point to you. No. 